Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. How about a jig for making spline reinforced miter joints that also doubles as a tenoning jig? In order to make this jig, I'm gonna use some scrap three quarter inch thick maple ply that I just had laying around my shop. These two pieces of plywood that I just cut are gonna to come together to form an L and they're gonna get attached with screws at the bottom. But before I can attach these two pieces of plywood which will form the main part of the jig, I'm gonna make three dovetailed grooves in this face of this piece of plywood for my micro jig match fit dovetail clamps which will slide in the dovetailed groove. Now before I can make the dovetailed groove at the router table using a dovetail bit, I'm gonna remove most of the material at the table saw using a stack dado set. I thought about making the dovetailed grooves go in this direction or top to bottom, but uh, because I'm gonna be using this spline jig also as a tenoning jig, it actually makes more sense to have the dovetail channels go in this direction. And that might make more sense later. These plywood cutoffs are gonna form braces and they're gonna go behind the front face of the jig and they'll get attached with screws. Next thing I'm gonna do is just cut these to size. On my old spline jig, I had a 45 degree support in both the back and front of the cut. But on my new spline jig, I'm only gonna put a 45 degree support in the back. I found that having the 45 degree support in the front would uh, block my view of the cut when I would line up the stock with the blade. Now, I don't really even think the front support is even necessary to support the piece because the clamps hold everything down pretty good. By the help of a 45 degree triangle as a guide, I clamped down the 45 degree support. Now I can pre-drill for two screws. I'm 
I'm gonna pre-drill for two screws to attach a 90 degree support. I actually thought about making this one support and have it adjustable, but uh, I decided against that. And this 90 degree support will just be removable. My hardware store didn't have any hex head bolts, so I had to make a square head at the grinder. This should work fine. Another way to attach the 90 degree fence instead of using screws to attach it to the face of the jig is to use those wooden uh, dovetails that we created earlier with the bolts going through. And the bolts will just slide into the dovetail channel. I made a couple knobs out of some scrap wood and I recessed a nut into the face of the knob. And on the back side of the knob is a washer in between the back of the knob and the front face of the 90 degree fence. Now, if you're gonna use this method of securing the 90 degree fence instead of just screwing it to the face of the jig, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fence is actually square to the table saw surface before you tighten down the knobs. When you're not using the 90 degree fence, you can just put it into the middle channel for storage. How cool is that? Just always make sure that the bolts clear the blade when you're using the jig. In order to use this jig, either to cut the recess for a spline or to cut the cheeks off of a tendon, you clamp your work to the face of the jig and push the jig forward. And as you're pushing the jig forward, you also wanna make sure that you're making contact with the side of the rip fence as you're pushing forward. In order to set the depth of the spline, just place your work alongside the blade and raise the blade until the blade reaches the mark on your work. Now you can make adjustments to your table saw rip fence until your blade lines up with where you want your spline to be. I have a piece of scrap wood clamped in and I have my 90 degree fence attached for making the cheek cuts of a tenon. I've already made the shoulder cuts, one on each side, and now I'm all set to make the cheek cuts. So I'll make one cheek cut on one face and then flip the board around to make the cheek cut on the other side. That's all I have today. Please consider becoming a supporter of Garage Woodworks through Patreon, and you'll find a link to my Patreon page in the first comment below. I'll see you all next time.